So, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, this is a way, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of uh, flex duct installed. This is a monster for airflow. I'm a service tech. I'm not an installer of uh, systems. I'm the guy that has to come after you've installed a system and figure out why it doesn't work. And unfortunately, this is what we run into a lot. Now, I'm not really against flex duct. I have it in my house. It's in the duct system in my house. I put it in there because I wanted a quiet system and I got it. It is dead quiet. It's so quiet my mom didn't like to stay there when she was uh, house sitting the house because she couldn't hear the furnace turn on. But when it's put in poorly, that's where we run into these problems. Now Looking at this one, you know, this is fairly simple. We've got bends that we don't need to have in there. Uh, sharp bends. Uh, this is not a video to gripe about the stuff or anything like that. It's a video about putting it in decent. And it's not a complete video about how to install this stuff, how to make connections. None of that stuff is, is involved here. I just want you to put the stuff in so it works. If you're gonna use it, and if you're in an uh, unconditioned space like an attic, uh, you pretty much have to use this stuff. You can do it with hard pipe, but you know, it's much more expensive. Uh, but this kind of work, it just makes it tougher when I have to come after and figure out why the ECM fan motor failed or why they don't have enough air in one spot, something like that. By the way, ECM fan motors have failed because of excessive pressure in the duct. It's, uh, it tries to keep up with it, it can't keep up, and it has to eventually just give up. But let's take a look at this and you can see it's kind of squished up right now. Let's see what happens if I stretch it out. Now don't install this stuff until you've actually taken that center, uh, the uh, liner on the inside and pulled it out. I don't have a second person so I have to use a tractor. Until it has stretched completely out. Remember this thing comes 25 feet in a four foot box or a three and a half foot box. Actually about three foot box. It's that squished up. And it's not gonna work right with that inner liner all squished up. So it does need to be stretched out before you do any of the installation. Stretch it out first. Now what we're showing here, this is a uh, supports on four foot centers. That's mostly code from what I've seen. Uh, I don't like this either. Uh, supposedly you can sag a half an inch per foot. Uh, it's probably a little beyond that limit here. So what can you do about this? How can you make this actually work? Uh, and by the way, this is how this looks when it's newly installed. I can guarantee you over the years this stuff is going to start squishing down. Now it's got good resistance. You know it's a little springy wire in there and stuff. Now we'll say nobody ever comes up there so yeah it's going to be fun. But it still will go down. Uh, you can make it a little better by stretching it when you're installing it. That's holding up a little better. At least to start with. But it's probably still going to sag after a while. 
Now, if there's any way I can do it, I want to put something underneath it. I don't want to hang that from the rafters. I think that's a terrible way to put in flex duct. It's going to sag. It's going to sag more and more as time goes on. Uh, it's just not a good way to do it. If you can put, like I put a piece of plywood between these two pieces here. Those pieces are four feet apart, those uh, two by twelves. And uh, if I can lay that on a piece of wood, even if it's a two by four, it's going to be better than hanging it because I can make that straight. I can pull that stuff out. I can stretch it. If I have the, as I have here, my boot right there, I can stretch that out. It's going to be a straight run. I'm going to move plenty of air. Now here, this is one of the things that I see quite a bit of. Uh, we've got a trunk line that that fits into there, and it's going to go to the diffuser out there. Well, you should not, at least in my opinion, you should not turn this stuff. I think you should turn it with hard pipe belts. Uh, I know it's done. I know it supposedly works, but that's an area. I mean, big time. Even if you took this and said, well, I'll put this at the end of the trunk line or something. You still got a 180 degree turn in there in duct that is not smooth inside. It's going to effectively reduce the size of that run, uh, especially when you put a corner in there like that. I, I won't do that. I gotta figure out some other way to do this. So commonly, you'll see somebody, they'll have a plenum come out, and maybe they'll use uh, fuzzy duct or something like that for the plenum, and then they'll have these things snaking out all over the place. Uh, you want the minimum number of bends, and uh, the minimum amount of sag that you can get away with. And it starts out with stretching that stuff tight to, to start with and uh, designing it so there's as few as possible uh, bends in the pipe. Now there's one other thing I'm going to talk about. Now this is how I'm going to connect up. I found an old piece of fuzzy duck floating around here and I put a takeoff on there and a hard pipe L. This is the way it should be done. Now I'm not talking about install and putting on masky, mastic, uh, tape, connections, insulation, none of that stuff is here. This is, you know, I'm a troubleshooter. This is how I want to do this because I now have a smooth transition from here right over to here. That's what I'm looking at in this thing. That's all this is all about. If you were actually doing this, it'd be a different ball game. You have to, you have to do a lot of other things and that's for somebody else's video. But I'm gonna compare this to if you just hook up the flex duct straight to the takeoff. Now here's the same connection made with just the takeoff. Now you can see I've lost a whole bunch of cross-sectional area because first of all, I gotta pull this stuff tight. I want this stuff to be straight. So when I pull it straight, I lose, uh, I lose cross-sectional area in the pipe. This is not gonna flow right. That's what I would have to do that's what I'd have to do to get this to flow right. So I've got to make a much wider turn and I can't pull this stuff tight. If I pull it tight, it's going to start cutting it off. So, uh, and even if I'm hanging it from uh, rafters, I'm still going to have problems with that. So I don't like it that way. I want that hard pipe L there. Okay, here we have 
a straight boot on the end of this thing and when you look at that that's too sharp too I don't like that it's not gonna it's not gonna flow like it should it's squishing down it's it's only gonna get worse okay this is the way I would want to do it now I can stretch out that uh, flex duct so it has very little flexibility as long as it's straight it works pretty good okay I hope this helps uh, I'm a service tech I'm not an install tech uh, these are things that I've seen in the field that I've had to fix because the, the job to me was done sloppy uh, I'm this is not meant as uh, an install video because there's so much more to it there's so much you know the mastic and all that and so on but when I come on to these things and there's not enough airflow and there's been problems this these are the kind of things I'll end up doing up especially in an attic that flex duct should not be crumpled up it should not sag it should not go wandering around making 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees whatever it's not supposed to do that it does not work right if you do if you can stretch it out not use too much use just enough to make the run you want you can do a really good job with this stuff and it will work okay like I said it's in my house I used it for my duck runs uh, they're all straight there's no curves in any of them because that the curves are what eat the air in these things I mean this it has a because it's not smooth pipe it's always going to have friction but the friction can be minimized by keeping this stuff straight and using L's on the ends uh, rather than just bending the uh, flex duct because I can guarantee you it will shut down the air going to wherever you do that uh, that's pretty much the end of this one it's not an install video as I've said uh, it's just things that I've found in the field and the solutions I've come up with. So that's it on this one.